The first time we went to Israel, my wife and I, we had the privilege of traveling with someone that they called Roy the Goy. Now, Goy, of course, is the word for Gentile. The term Guy is actually Goy. Goyim is plural, the Gentiles. And Roy was with the Billy Graham Association, and he used to take the Decision Magazine tours to Israel three times a year. He'd been there over a hundred times when we traveled with him. And he knew everybody there. He had a great memory and he had a great personality and he knew everybody around. Well, we were staying at a hotel on the shores of Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee, and we were sitting having dinner and we were sitting at the table with Roy. He looked up and there was an Israeli military officer standing at the doorway of the restaurant. And Roy recognized him and beckoned him to come in. And so this officer came over and he sat down at a spare seat at the table. And they had a good chat about things for a little bit. And then Roy said to him, now this brother Nicholson, he's a good friend of mine. And I would very much like him to hear the story you told me about your days on the Golan Heights during the Six Day War. And he demurred, he wasn't too eager to tell me. And Roy said, now listen, he'll, he's a good man and, and he needs to hear this story. So eventually, this young officer told me the story. Now, the Six Day War was six days of battle in June of 1967, when Nasser from Egypt wanted to coalesce the Arab forces in the various nations into what he called the Arab League. And he ordered the United Nations, who were providing a buffer between Egypt and Israel, out of the way. And he began to maneuver his troops along their southern border. Well, the Israelis' position was, we don't like to have a preemptive strike. We don't like to start a war but the Egyptians have started the war. By m mobilizing troops, we are being forced into a situation where we have to mobilize our troops too. But Israel doesn't have much of a standing army. Their university professors and taxi drivers and everybody else, they have to go to war. And essentially the economy shuts down. So the Israeli position was, They've already started a war of attrition. They're going to destroy our economy unless we can get this war over quickly. And so in a preemptive strike, their air force went in and destroyed the Egyptian air force on the ground. And then the army was at their bidding and very quickly the Egyptians were driven back all the way across the Sinai Peninsula. Well, it was then that the Syrians came into the battle. Now, if you look at a map, you'll see that uh, being down at the Sinai with most of your army and then the Syrians coming in, they're down in the far southwest and the Syrians are up in the northeast. And there was only a handful of troops really between the Syrians and Jerusalem. And it was a very, very difficult time. Their bloodiest battles were fought up on the Golan Heights. Well, this young officer was in a tank, an Israeli tank with a crew and got surrounded up there by five Russian-built Syrian tanks. And they said, look, it's time to give up. And they were ready to open the hatch and put out the white flag when there was a young believer, he called him, that is a believer in God, Jew who believed in God, and he said, stop, wait, I want to pray. And he laid claim to the promise found in Isaiah 54 in verse 17, which says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And so he cried out to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to spare their lives and to give them a victory in the face of this seeming defeat. When the commanding officer opened the tank, the hatch, and looked out, all the Syrian tanks were in flames. He said there was no explanation for it because there was hardly anyone else around. We were up there alone. And he believed that it was God who had delivered him at that time. The Arabs don't call the war the Six-Day War. They call it an naksa the setback. And it certainly was a setback. Because during the 67 war, the Israelis took all of the Golan Heights, 
all of the West Bank, all of East Jerusalem, all of the Gaza Strip, and all of the Sinai Peninsula in six days. Now they gave back most of the Sinai in the uh, accord with Saddam Hussein and they eventually turned the Gaza Strip over uh, to the Arabs, but they've maintained the Golan Heights and of course Jerusalem and the West Bank. But as I thought of this scripture, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and thought of the faith of that young man, it came home to me, do I have that kind of faith? Do I believe that no weapon formed against me shall prosper in the spiritual battle that I fight? The Lord has given us armor. You know, only twice in the New Testament is this word panoply used. Once it has to do with the strong manned arm who keeps his palace and his goods are in peace. That's the devil. And people are Satan's goods. But when a stronger than he comes, the stronger than the strong man, that's the Lord Jesus, he takes away all his armor in which he trusts and sets the people free. That phrase is the panoply, the complete set of armor. He takes it away from Satan. And likewise, when Paul comes to the climax in Ephesians chapter 6 of that epistle, he says that God has given us the whole armor of God, the panoply. So the enemy has had all his armor taken away, and we have been given a complete set of armor. And so while this is only an application to this scripture, we can lay claim to this truth, that as we go out into the day, we can lay hold of God, and we can say, Lord, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We have the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. We say with the apostle, thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph through our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord help us to march on to victory, to lay claim to this glorious fact that God has equipped us to be winners, to be champions, to be on the winning side, victorious right through to the finish line. So God help us to live in that and to enjoy that and to use the weapons before we get out of bed in the morning to put on our armor and be ready to face the foe so that God may give us the victory and Jesus may get the glory. 